Hey guys, in this short video, I want to talk to you about the connection between zinc and prostate health. Something that not many people are aware of is that the human prostate gland actually contains extremely high levels of zinc due to a specialized zinc accumulating epithelial tissue. So in other words, the prostate, akin to how the thyroid needs specific minerals like selenium and iodine to produce thyroid hormone and to convert that thyroid hormone, the prostate has a specific affinity towards zinc for specific metabolic and cellular functions, for example, the production of prostate fluid. So as you could probably imagine, just like how a deficiency of certain minerals can lead to goiter or the enlargement of the thyroid, a deficiency in the mineral zinc can lead to the enlargement of the prostate as well as many other abnormal alterations of prostate metabolism. So in other words, a zinc deficiency might lead to abnormalities in the function of the prostate that may lead to prostate disease. In fact, when reviewing a study on the zinc status of patients with benign prostatic hyperplasia and prostate carcinoma, it was found that in prostatic carcinoma, mean tissue zinc was decreased by 83% compared to normal tissue. And in benign prostatic hyperplasia, there was a 61% decrease in mean tissue zinc compared to normal tissues. So this study concluded that there is a very obvious and significant deficiency of zinc in people with prostate cancer and prostate enlargement. And if we look at another study on the correlation between zinc and prostate cancer, this study points out that zinc is responsible for the maintenance of DNA integrity in normal prostatic epithelial cells by modulating the expression and activity of DNA repair and damage response proteins. It goes on to state that a depletion of zinc or a zinc deficiency increases the expression of certain repair proteins, but compromise the expression of others, leading to DNA binding activities that result in impaired DNA repair function. So in simpler terms, Zinc is important for the functioning of the DNA and the integrity of the DNA in the prostate in that zinc is specifically responsible for normal and healthy DNA repair. So when zinc is deficient, the abilities of the DNA to repair become diminished, therefore leading to abnormalities in the DNA, which could ultimately lead to tumors and cancer. Now there are more studies that are similar to this that tie in the correlation between the importance of zinc for normal and healthy prostate function and how a deficiency of zinc can lead to all sorts of abnormalities in the function of the prostate and ultimately cancer. But just to not be redundant, I'll end the information here. And if you're interested in learning more, you can just hop online and you know, search zinc and prostate cancer or prostate health and review the studies for yourself. But generally speaking, I think that this is a pretty good overview and a good bit of information just to get you started as to looking into some potential treatments here, which if you haven't figured it out by now, is ensuring the adequate intake of dietary zinc. So with that being said, you're probably wondering what are the best sources of zinc? Should I get it through my food or through supplementation? What should I do? Well, first and foremost, I'd probably recommend steering away from supplementing with most minerals. Mineral supplements tend to come in a free metal form, which can do more harm than good in the most basic sense. A lot of the times they can create other mineral imbalances, they can cause bad reactions with other minerals and tissues in the body. So you're usually better off getting your minerals from food sources. So there are plenty of foods that contain zinc. However, some foods contain much more zinc than others and also contain other cofactors that are beneficial to utilizing that zinc in your body properly. And in my understanding and my research, the top sources of dietary zinc are going to be first and foremost, oysters. The second is going to be grass-fed beef liver. From there, I would recommend looking into the supplementation of polyrachis black ant. So I'm imagining for most of you, all three of these don't sound very appetizing. Not many people tend to like oysters. Not many people at all really like beef liver. I find most people would prefer oysters over beef liver, but if neither of these sound appetizing to you, then I'm gonna recommend that you supplement with polyrachis black ant, which actually pound for pound probably contains the most zinc because to get the amount of zinc in, let's say one gram or a thousand milligrams of polyrachis black ant, you'd have to eat a lot more in volume of oysters or beef liver. If you take a look at polyrachis black ant, the extracted powder, 50 milligrams of it contains around 120 to 150 milligrams. So if you do the math and you convert this down to let's say one gram, 
which is about a thousand milligrams of the extracted powder or one serving in our particular powder, you're gonna get about 12 to 15 milligrams of dietary zinc. And the recommended daily allowance of zinc is about 11 to 12 for the normal person. So you're gonna get in one serving just a quarter teaspoon of the polyrachis black ant, 100% of your recommended daily allowance. Now keep in mind that the requirements of zinc can fluctuate Generally speaking, if you are stressed out, if you have health imbalances, or if you have prostate issues, you're probably gonna wanna get more zinc than the recommended daily allowance. But again, just to be safe, you're gonna wanna get this through a food source or a natural source, whether it be oysters, beef liver, or polyrachis black ant. Now, the reason that I recommend the polyrachis black ant for most people is first and foremost, again, you can get the amount of zinc that you need in a day in a tiny amount. Secondly, because it's an extracted powder, you can typically add this to a smoothie, a juice, or something like a coffee tonic, like the recipes we make here on the channel, and not really detect any taste, especially if you add it to a smoothie. So again, this is probably the biggest appeal to polyrachis black ant over oysters or beef liver. However, I would probably still recommend that if you can, get in the oysters and beef liver at least once a week. At least strive to get two ounces of oyster and beef liver at the bare minimum because they also contain fat-soluble vitamins, other important minerals like copper and selenium, amongst others. However, for those of you struggling with prostate issues or if you just want to ensure a healthy prostate as a male as you go into the later years of your life, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you're getting in enough dietary zinc something that's very easy to overlook because unless you're consuming again tons of shellfish oysters beef liver or red meat or other organ meat then you're probably not getting enough of it because the plant sources of zinc that you'll find mostly being pumpkin seeds hemp seeds sesame seeds first of all you're gonna have to eat a lot of those to get the amount of zinc that you would need and by that point all of the phytates and the lectins in those nuts and seeds might start causing digestive issues, not to mention that those phytates tend to bind with the zinc. So unless they're sprouted or soaked or something, you're probably gonna have to still consume a ton of the pumpkin seeds to get the amount that you would need when it would be a lot easier to just take a quarter teaspoon of something like polyrachis black ant. However, that does bring this video to a close. I figured that this information and research would be very helpful to our viewership. So if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are new here and you wanna see more videos similar to this one. And last but not least, if you're interested in learning more about polyrachis black ant or supplementing with it, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.